Tractate Sanhedrin, page 27. We start with page 26b, six lines from the Rechavot, from the large lines. Today we're going to continue the subject of who are the people who's befitting to be a kosher witnesses in the rabbinic court. People committing all kind of mistakes, sins, whatever we want to call it. The question is, if, pe if a person stumble in certain area and caught, for example, in monetary issues, is that person is still capable to bear a witness for something that relate to other subjects, nothing to do with money and vice versa. What exactly, how you hold a person's mistake against him being a witness? It's a matter of fact that as a rabbi, when one needs to officiate wedding, for example, and you need witnesses, it's always a struggle to find someone that really stands in the level of befitting kosher witnesses for that. So soon you see a list of different violations and people who caught in those violations. And then we're going to examine with all set and done if those characters are still good to give a testimony. As you know, the language of the Talmud always is a side notes and other thing to learn as well. So let's start. Amar Ula. Machashava mo'elet afilu ledivrei Torah. Here it's one of the idea of thought or concerns. So Rashi explained that concern about another person's um, way of life, um, another person's livelihood, um, it's a, a causing a, a person to forget the Torah studies. But there are other ways to understand. So in a simple way, the way that most of the Mefarshim explains, and obviously there are many, they said, So in one way they said that the Almighty provided um, enough sustenance to the Torah scholars, so in that sense they not depend upon the hands. It's almost like saying, God is the one who taking care. But, Amaraba im asukim lishma enamoelet. So if a person really study for the sake of studies, doesn't have another motivation of the person's study, then even he is worried about making a living and other things, that will not cause him forgetfulness of what he learned in the Torah, Shneemar, they said in the book of Proverbs chapter 19, Rabot <laughs> The, a person has many thoughts, many devices in his heart, but the counsel of the Lord, um, that who should stand. So Rabbi interpreted this, that means, When a person study for the purpose of study, it will stay forever. So it's a famous story I heard once, about a great Rabbi Yitzchak el Khanan was a great uh, rabbi in the old Europe. And he um, was a candidate for a job and was, at that time was a um, popular job and many others applied to that job. But he was a really lishmais we learned for the sake of learning. So while he traveled, he stopped in one of those um, motels and didn't want to waste time, so he looked and he found a book that um, that have uh, explanation of the Torah reading. It's called Chavad Dat. is one of the Sidurim, as you know, or Tzarat Filot, Chavad Dat. There are certain Sidurim that gives you a long explanation of the meaning of the prayer. And he just opened the law of Torah, meaning the law of Sifrei Torah, Torah reading and more. And all of a sudden he studied it and he get to um, to talk to the people about um, his opportunity, his new job, and people ask him the same question as he just hour earlier study by kind of coincidence. Um, and that's what he interpreted later, that uh, when a person studies sincerely, 
So there are many devices in men's heart, but the counsel of the Lord that shall stand. And the um, the Rogotrover, the great rabbi who get his smicha, his rabbinic ordination from the Lubavitcher Rebbe, he said that um, in a rabbinic world, the first person when he decided to take a job as a rabbi should study the law of Sefer Torah. Why? He explained the other laws. You have time to go and search in the books. When it's come to the Sefer Torah, the middle of of reading or things like that, the Torah is open. Everyone is waiting for you and you need to rule right away. So he said, therefore, the best advice is said, in order to avoid tircha de tzibura, imposing upon the public or the secretion of the Torah, that one should emphasize and study that materials. Amar Rabbi Yehuda Eimatai, remember in the Mishnah we gave a list just day before yesterday of people who are disqualified. One of them is dice player, game player, all these characters. So they said, Rabbi Yudha, hold, wait a second. Doesn't mean um, everyone. There are people who have a profession, but somehow, once in a while, they go and play g um, gambling. So he said, if you have an established profession, and in our simple language is not affected, you establish compassion, a profession, it's not that we wish to, right? But this will not, by merely fact that you're gambling sometimes, uh, that was not sufficient to disqualify you from being a witness. Again, we not endorse gambling. But Rabbi Uda said that we have to differentiate between a addicted professional or addicted gambler or someone who makes a stable living, but from time to time we go and play that. He said that's also the law. Follow Rabbi Yehuda. V'amar Rabbi Abba Omar Rabbi Lazar, Kulan tzrichim hachaza beveit din. Meaning, this part of the commitment, obligation of Rabbini court, to promulgate those people who are disqualified. Um, because if you don't give that notice to others, um, you basically create an atmosphere of possibility for them to be called as the witnesses. Ro'e pligeba. We talked yesterday about a shepherd who is di also disqualified from bearing witness. So here you see a, dis a disputation. Rav Acha and Rav Ina, one said Baya Chaza and one said no Baya Chaza. So one said that, that he needs uh, to announce and the Bedi needs to announce, the other said no. So Rav Ben Yonatan and Yad Ramah said it's be because not everyone knows the exact situation, so that's the reason. Anyway, Bishlam and Amanda Marlo Bayah Chaza, I know the Maravu the Marav, Stam Roe Pasul, El Amanda Maroe, Achre Chaza, my Stam Roe Pasul, the Bistama Machrizin, that we assume that in an ordinary case, um, the Rabbinic Court proclaim about him and that he is disqualified for having engaged in um, uh, shepherding, and uh, therefore, um, that's the so now the Gemara circumscribed, limited, and said, "Aim atanada uva chatim alei tregas lanin." So it was a document of gift. The two rubbers signed as the witnesses. Savar of Papa Bar Shmuel achshura dalo achrizin alau. He thought the great rabbi to make it valid. Why? Because the court did not announce that these two guys are disqualified. Amar le Ravad nehide veina nachraza begazlan de Rabanan begazlan de Oraita mibayen nachraza. All idea of us is a rabbinic court to proclaim. That's about someone who's by rabbinic court uh, may disqualified or disqualified. But someone that everyone knows by the biblical term that he's a robber, you do not need um, because the Torah said it clearly. Um, the, the someone physically, forcefully took something from someone. That's a robber. Anyway, um, that's the, as we said earlier, the big issues many rabbis have are the officiation of weddings when you find the proper kosher witnesses. Siman davar varayot ganav. Rav Nachman ochle davar cher psulin leedut. Here we're using a euphemism. Davar cher literally meaning people who eat um, pork or bacon. But uh, it's, um, it's not... Uh, De dealing about pork, they're talking about people who uh, accept charity from idolaters. So it's kind of uh, uh, embarrassing and it's uh, uh, causing the desecrations of God's name. 
and they are tantamount to wicked, pe to, to wicked people uh, guilty of monetary transgressions as they are willing to desecrate God's name for monetary gain. So he said that they, they are invalid for the witnesses. So they said, Hanami le All of that applies if they are doing it in public, taking charity from idolater. Aval betzina lo. But if you take it in private, it's not an issue. Uve faresia name lo amran la def shalit ne zuni betzina ve kamvaz enaf she befaresia. Even if he does it in public, it's only if he have a chance to do it in private. And despite this, he, he disgraces himself by taking it in public. But if there's no other way to support himself, that's the way he makes his livelihood. So he cannot restrict to that. So Rav Nachman said, one who's due to a rumor is suspected of engaging in forbidden sexual relations is fit to bear witness. So... The key idea, according to some Rishonim, you see it also in Rashi and the Reef, they say that uh, you have this um, temptation that you cannot overcome. But that still not make him uh, disqualified in court, just because he couldn't restrain his desires. Amar Rav Sheshet Animari, so Khatam Sofer said that Rav Sheshet disputed here, but anyway, he hold, he said that, um, um, Ani Mari, so he said, answer me, my master. The halacha is that one who is a rumor to have engaged in forbidden um, uh, sexual intercourse, so arba'in bechitfei bekasher, he get uh, 40 malkot in his shoulder, and yet you told me that he is uh, good to bear witness. Um, so you have to say, if it's come to give a witnesses with a about married women that suspected uh, for forbidden relation, that's one thing. That he is disqualified because obviously he may have other intent why he played that game or why he's involved in this. But, um, so he said all of that testimony um, applies when the, the, the testimony that her status as a married woman, which means testimony that her husband died and he suspected of wanting her for himself, but uh, if it's a testimony that established her in that status, so you have no issue with that. So, Pshita, so they said that's obvious. So they said that uh, if it's a testimony that he may lie for all kind of motivation, for all the motivate to give a testified. Um, uh, falsely married, that she is married for all kind of reasons. So the Bet Meir explains the concept of Maim Gnuvim in, in Taku, stolen water are sweet, uh, which means the forbidden is more pleasant than the one is permitted. So he explained that uh, it's like a game. Uh, sometimes people does that. Um, it's like Reb Chaim Shmulevit said that the person does that with a evil inclination, with Yetzer except upon himself something in order to violate that, so that's kind of satisfied the Yetzirah Hara. Then the third view, the third deen, the third rule of Rav Nachman, Vamar Rav Nachman, Ganav Nisan, Veganav Tishrei, Losh Mei Ganav. So it's all depend upon the time. If a thief of the month of Nisan, and a thief of Tishrei, one who steals during the harvest season, so it's not called a thief. So it's not, it's not disqualified from bearing witnesses. So all of that applies to a to tenant farmer. So it's a small amount. And something that the work is complete, which means that it uh, needed uh, no any further pr processing. So here you have a situation that. Um, the people who are basically thieves, the, 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 it was the incident of the farmer, um, tenant farmer of Rav Zvid. So one stole a cow of barley and Rav Zvid disqualified him from bearing witness. The other guy stole a cluster of dates and it disqualified him to be a witness. The reason for this disqualification is that um, 
the quantity of produce they stole is not considered a small amount. Um, it's a famous story about the rabbi of Shiniva. It was a Eastern Europe, a small village called Shiniva, and people said that he had Ruach HaKodesh, was a great man. So the story goes that the guy sent him a, a telegram in those days, and he asked the rabbi to, pr to pray that the, uh, the non-Jewish competitive should die because he makes his life miserable, and he makes his business rough. So the rabbi wrote a letter and says, if he come to my chamber, I'm going to slap on his face twice. In those days they did it. So why? So the story goes that um, um, the rabbi, s um, uh, the guy insisted, the story goes that he did, and he says, you want me to pray because you desire his wife. And that's the reason why you want to get rid of him, not because he's really a hard competitor to you. And it turned out it was true. Anyway, Hanhu, that's the story I heard. Hanhu Kvorai de Kavu Nafsha, Biom Tavrishon Shel Atzer. So this is a little bit digression of the subject, but we need to know the halacha. If a um, Yontev, for example, Shavuot, is two days festival, so out in diaspora, like here in the United States, uh, we are observing two days of festival. If someone passed away the first day, and you need to bury, as you know, by Torah immediately, so we allowed to bury by a non-Jews, and we differentiate between the first and the second. The non-Jews is applied for the first day, the second day there is a vari variation in the law that one can bury the second day. So it was a story of people who were in charge for burial. They bury someone during the festival of Shavuot, and, and basically they desecrated incorrectly because um, um, the whole idea of not doing work in Yontov supersedes the idea of digging a grave. Um, the whole idea of Isura Kazat Dam, the Eve of Shavuot, those days they used to take blood, the, the donation of blood, the Eve of Shavuot, so they, uh, it's a lot of Kabbalistic literature that relates to that. that uh, like the Satan is closed, is Eve of Shavuot, etc. So, in short, they basically desecrate Shavuot inappropriately, desecrate the holiday. Shamtinu Rav Papa Ufaslinu Ledut. Rav Papa was furious at them, and he basically made them uh, excommunicated and disqualified them from bearing witnesses. However, Vachshirun Ravuna Bred Rav Yeshua. Ravun Bred Rav Yeshua, he basically said that they are fine. He deemed them to be f to fit to be witnessed, even they in violation. Amar le Rav Papa bar Rishayim Ninu. Rav Papa said, "Why are you doing that? They are wicked people." Savrei ka mitzvah ka abid. He says they assume that they are doing a mitzvah as they are burying the dead. So Rav Papa said, "Va'ka meshamtin alu." He says, oh, "I did. I didn't. I excommunicate them for this, and they continue to bury people on a festival." Savrei kapara. So they hold that the reason you do that is in to achieve atonement for them. Um, um, they felt that it was a, the need. Um, so there are those who say that the whole concept of rabbinic, it's only if a person kind of unwittingly, unintentionally does certain things. Um, one of the famous Hasidic uh, tale, it's about the Baal Shem Tov, the founder of the Hasidic movement of the 1780. So one of the story goes that um, he passed away, but it's out of Israel, so it's two days, and no one knows if the Baal Shem Tov passed away the first day of Shavuos or the second day of Shavuos. They don't know. So later, some people claim that they saw a book. It's mainly the Hasidic sect of Chernobyl. And they hold the true story was that he passed away the first day. And because the, the world, people didn't want those um, uh, non-Jews non uh, or idolaters or whatever they are to bury the Baal Shem Tov, and they postponed it for the second day, that's the story um, behind that. But um, that's the dynamics. Uh, all the times. Uh, in one hand, we want to do outreach. On the other hand, what's the um, uh, price you're making? The story about Rabbi of Brisk. It was a great uh, Lithuanian rabbi that went to Switzerland, 
and they are running short for the minion. So they call someone who's totally not religious. And the rabbi of Brisk uh, honored him by Aliyah. So someone was screaming, said the guy is in violation of everything. And how come they do that? So after service, um, the, the Abu Brisk said, look, the man helped us to make the minion. I want to encourage him. But the guy who screamed is also right. So it's kind of both of us are right. Anyway, now we're going to the important of Yael Kagam. We learn in the past that when is a disputation between Rava and Abaye, we always go by Rava, excluding six uh, places that is called Yael Kagam. It's a, a Hebrew acronym, abbreviation of six locations that only in the six location we go by Abaye. One of them is going to be the upcoming one and we start with the first man. It was stated itmar. Page 27. Ed zomem abayamar lemafre o nifsal veravamar mikanu lehaba o nifsal. So here is a core understanding between abayam and rava. Abayam said, the moment he caught lying, you go backward and retroactively you said he's not qualified. Period. It's past. Um, in, in that sense, he comes, um, he brings the witnesses in Nisan, um, then the other guy brought the, the, his witnesses in Tishrei several months later, and the new witnesses confirm that the first one is lying. The moment he caught like that, you go backward and to remind me like IRS. They caught you something, they go backward seven years. So here, you go backward and this guy and said he's disqualified, goodbye. That's Abaye's view, which by the way, the Alaha. Rava said no. You go by the circumstantial evidence at this very moment he's disqualified so from now on you cannot trust him but what he did in the past is different um, it was a case not, not long ago of a rabbi that was caught in all kind of things um, and it was a discussion among the chief rabbinate in Israel if you disqualified retroactively the gay route that he did in the past and it was uh, a lot of people in crisis if they disqualified which they thought at the beginning then they change but it's all come from the same mindset the moment you a person caught you go backward according to Abaya and you disqualify so basically they bring a proof from the book of Shmot chapter 23 they said the moment you're conspiring with someone who's wicked so that's it it's past it's he is disqualified and therefore do not allow a wicked man to serve as a witness pe pe period. Rava is kind of said, Mikanu Labo Nifsal. You caught him from now on, he is disqualified. Et Zome Chidushu. Mai Chazir Samachan, Es Mochan, and Lachal Mishat Chidushu Vaelach. So basically, you go for the time that he is um, novelty and onward, which means this, the whole idea of disqualification. It's not going backward, you go from that point. There is another version that said Rabbi Ag Rava agree with Abaye. Umaitam Kamar, and what the reason he said that he is disqualified only from now and onward, Mikanu Leaba, that's rabbinic enactment. That's the rabbinic decree, Mishum Pseida de Lekohot. That he is concerned about something else, that he is monetary loss for purchases was accusation has been. Um, uh, been validated by the, these witnesses between the time of the witnesses' first testimony and when they are rendered conspiring witnesses. So if the disqualification of the witnesses were applied retroactively as by the right of it should, all these transactions will be nullified which will cause a loss to these purchases in, in addition to the aggravation. So my benai, what's the really difference between Abaye and Rava? So here is the circumstantial evidence that speaks about they have, they bring um, um, two witnesses disqualified, the first set of witnesses, by testifying the first set once committed uh, robbery, and uh, therefore are a unfit to give a testimony. So the reason that Rava disqualified and did, uh, this, um, did not disqualify conspiring witnesses retroactively is because that uh, uh, that it is another ruling. Uh, it is um, uh, limited to that case. But uh, if you talk about purchaser and you want to protect them, that uh, that uh, will apply to this qualification of all witnesses, not only conspiring witnesses. 
עבד רב פאפי עובדה וקבתי דה רבא, מר בר אבא שאמר הלכת הקבתי דה אביי. So basically as we said earlier, that, that uh, when it's come to Ed Zomem, that someone who's conspiring witnesses, that he's caught lying, the court, you go, you, by ruling of Abaye, you go backward and you say, this guy is not just now, but you go backward and you said retroactively he's disqualified. So since we talk about it, we shall know, we go to six locations that we follow the rule of Abaye, it's follow the Hebrew word Yael, Yud Ein Lamed, Kuf Gimel Mem in very short, Yud is Yehush Shalomidat, which means someone who is um, give up on the lost item, uh, that uh, he doesn't have a sign or something that recognizes that this is the item he lost. And uh, the question is how far you go with the um, giving up hope. So basically that's one rule that Abaye said that uh, it's not considering Yehush, it's not considering someone that uh, just give up uh, hope. And, and the one who found this lost item cannot take it for himself. That's Sigmar and Baba Matzia 21. Ed is as we learn here. Ed meaning witness, that the witness that caught a lying uh, by other set, he is retroactively uh, disqualified. And then you have the rest, which is Lechi, Lamed, and Kagam, Kuf, Kiddushin, Gimel, Gilui, Mem, Mumar, and those are the rules that we go by the Abaye, the rest in the entire Talmud, we go by Ravah. So now, we talk about Bumal. That's, again, this disqualification for someone to serve as a witness in the rabbinic court. Here we talk about Mumal. Mumal, it's someone who's a, a person who's tra transgress or who eats a, a non-kosher meat. Ochel nevelot le teavon. Here we differentiate between two characters. One, he eats this non-kosher not because he wants to get even, he just cannot restrain his desire. Versus someone that does something on purpose to kind of doing even against God's will. It's a famous story about the Hasidic Rebbe. One day he went on those uh, well-known fast day, I think it was uh, Tisha B'Av, one of those Yom Kippur, and he passed by an unkosher place, he saw a fellow that's sitting there and eating. So the Rebbe walked in on a fast day and said to him, in Yiddish, um, enjoy the meal. And the guy say, thank you. <laughs> so the Hasidim didn't understand why he behaved like that. So the Rebbe explained to them that there are two different categories. There are people who does something, it's called to antagonize God and to antagonize the law, which called Achis. And there are people who just cannot control their desires, which is lower. So the Rebbe wants to kind of be a, uh, his uh, defender. So he tried to make him look good in the eye of the Lord. So he said, uh, enjoy the meal, and the guy said, thank you. So in that sense, he's doing that not because he anger God or anger people, he just did that because he cannot restrain himself. Anyway, so here we talk about the fellow that eating a non-kosher, cursed animal, leteavon, because he cannot control his desire. The vrea kol pasul. So everyone said that he cannot be a kosher witnesses in the court. Why? Because he does that, for example, he's selling non-kosher food just because he wants to make money. So in a sense, if this guy does things for making money, he can, we assume that he searching for those cheap meat and sell it, uh, and he get it cheap and he sell it and he make profit. So this guy can light the court for someone's paying off or something under the table or other things uh, he, he is capable. Lach is, but if the person does that, they eat non-kosher meat to express his insolence, which means it's a go purposely against religious, against God, against religion. So there's a disputation. Abaya mar pasul, Rava mar kasher. Abaya said that he's disqualified, Rava said he's fit. Why? Abaya mar pasul, Dabla rasha, Rahman amar, the shed rasha in Ed. Says he's wicked, so he cannot be a witness. Rava Rava mar kasher, rasha de Hamas bainan. The Rabbi said that you need to be a wicked in this specific area, for example, robbery. So, um, it was a case that came to the late Rabbi Moshe Feinstein, Zecher Tzadik Libracha. They asked him about a person that he said is not believing God. But he needs a job, so he wants to be a mashgiach. So, a supervisor of Kashrut. So, Moshe Feinstein said the problem with him, if he declares not believing in God, he can lie 
in court, they can lie at, at his side, at job, and you cannot trust him. So therefore, you cannot make him a supervisor of kashrut since he doesn't believe in the God who's watching over all the times. Anyway, based on our Gemara. All these psukim, all these verses, applies to robbers and those who uh, betray oath, who are disqualified from bearing witness. So the idea is, my love, echad shvuat shavu vechad shvuat mamon. Lo, idi vidi shvuat mamon, umay shvuat shvuat de alma. So people are taking an oath in vain. Unfortunately, to this very day, there is a uh, general concept that a mini court believe you ask people to place the hand on the toe and take an oath. So you believe that people will not go to that level to lie. But unfortunately, there are people who are so wicked, they're capable for everything. Anyway, Meitive, Al Dashet Rasha Ed, Al Dashet Hamas Ed, Elu Gazlanim Malverabiot. This is an example of people who are rubber or people who, who, who give a loan with interest. Truvita de Arbeye, Truvita. So this is basically a refutation of view of Abaye. So the question is, as we said, how far you go when you need to bring a kosher witnesses? Um, uh, take, for example, a typical secular. You have people that are, they're not going to walk on Yom Kippur, but they're going to walk on Shabbat. And uh, it's kind of funny because Shabbat, by the Torah law, it's much stricter than Yom Kippur. Or they can eat something that the Torah said is karet, that sort shall be cut off. But they never eat pork, even it's love, so it's pro prohibited, but it's not the same category. So people sometimes are weird in their behavior, but that's the way one of the things you struggle. If you take, for example, a police report, how far you trust the police report to uh, force the husband not to, um, to divorce his wife based on that report, how far you go with all kind of things. It's a discussion, the rashash tried to say that the moment um, a person betrayed in money, you cannot trust him in any monetary issue, but he's also struggle if from that point you cannot trust him with anything else. Neima ketanai. Edzo men pasul lekol atora kula di Rab Meir. Meir said that, as we said earlier, the Adrama explained that even he caught in a money issues. But the moment he caught lying big time, he cannot be a witness when it's come to a capital law, because if someone is suspected in a light matter, he can be way suspected of something that is severe. Rabbi Yosemar went to the room, Shuzam in Nefashot, but Ozam Amonot, Kashel in Nefashot. He says, look, you have to differentiate between severe punishment like execution versus monetary. So if someone caught it monetary, you cannot say that he cannot be a witness for other matters. You mean to say that now we match in juxtaposition between the two uh, disputations, which is Abaye hold the same as Rabbi Meir, and Rava hold the same as Rabbi Yossi. So they said Abaye Rabbi Meir, we hold the same as Rabbi Meir, because you go from the um, something that is light issue to major issue which is a much severe capital punishment. The Rabbi Damar Kabiyosi, the Mamre Chumra Lekula, says that, that from uh, being rendered a conspiring witness with regard to a relatively major issue, one is disqualified with regard to a relatively minor issue. But we do not say that from being rendered a conspiring witness with regard to a relatively minor uh, issue, one is disqualified for, for the major one. So he said, "Mechumra lekula amrinam, mechumra lechumra lo amrinam." The Gemara rejected that law. Ali the Rabbi, Ali by the Rabbi Yossi, kula amar replike kibliga apir the Rabbi Meir, which means that the dis disputation is concerned to Rabbi Meir. Abaye k Rabbi Meir v'Ravad kan lo kama Rabbi Meir atam elagabed zomem de mamon dera la shamayim vera la briot. So you talk only about conspiring witnesses when it's come to money, because he, in a way. He is in both ways, he is bad toward heaven, having transgressed the prohibition against bearing false witness, and bad toward people, because he, he has been causing another to lose money um, uh, unrightfully. So he is therefore suspected of testifying falsely with regard to any matter. 
But here, if it's only bad toward quote unquote heaven, but not to people, you may say no. You may can, can trust him in some manner. So, according to Rabbi, if someone eats coarse animal, leach is, so that's basically disp uh, depend upon the disputation between Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Yossi. So, or you can say that he go both ways. So, Vilchat Akvatei Davrei. So, uh, we basically rule, as we said earlier, according to Abaye, that if someone eats nebelot, an unkosher meat, leach uh, is, so he basically disqualified to be witnesses. So the question is, but um, we, um, there wasn't his opinion conclusively refuted. So he Rabbi Yossi. So he said that's basically um, the rule of Rabbi Yossi. And Abaye does not accept his opinion. So, ואת הבן אמר רבי יוסי, רב מאיר ורבי יוסי הלכה כרבי יוסי, שנעתם דסתם לתנא כרב מאיר, שיוז'לי נסתם בשנה הוא גובה רב מאיר, סורי משה פיינסטיין, זכר צדיק לברכה, הוא היה שאל פיינפול קווישן, הוא היה בכל דעי זרשה, ובכל דעי זה היה שאלה 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 And the parents said, well, you get it. And he says, I get it from the kosher butcher. So they asked Rabbi Feinstein, is that okay? So he said, children in those days don't lie to a parents. If they said it's get it from kosher place, you have to trust them. And nowadays, they go the other way around. So the question was asked to the later of Sheinberg. The, the, the parents are not religious and the children are religious. And they want to visit their home. And the question posted, Uh, if the father who's not religious said, I bought it in a kosher place. If the children can trust the father. So Rav Schoenberg ruled the same as uh, the late Rav Feinstein. And he said that um, uh, father, son, son, father, they don't lie in this matter. And we basically can't trust them. Ve'icha satamlan. It was a story of a fellow that killed another person. Amali Rajgul Ravav Ayakov Puka Enba. Come and examine the circumstantial evidence. If it's clear that he killed, so we're going to blind him. So it's either put him in excommunication or really do it uh, by in a sense of um, severe punishment, lashes, all kind of punishments that used to do in those days. The two witnesses came in and said that he is definitely murdered. Azal Hiu, so Barhama came in. So they come and testified against one of the two witnesses that came from the other party, basically to show that he is untruthful. So the guys came in and they said, this guy, one of the two witnesses that you approved earlier, he stole for me a cup of barley, the other one he stole for me a handle of spear. So basically, they try to um, um, examine in a cross-examination and take away the credit from the other parties, one of the two witnesses, to take one of the two witnesses, the credit. Page 27b. So basically, what we have here, it's a very fascinating scenario. The second party disqualified one of the witnesses, but not direct with the subject that he's testifying now in the court, They're bringing something that shows that the person have no credit because he lies over other matter, such as he, um, uh, in my present, he stole so and so cup of barley, and my present he stole handle of spears. So you just try to disqualify the guy from different circumstantial evidence from being a kosher witness in the court. Amarli Madatech Kirabi Meir. So he said to him, and by the way, this is a heavy disputation, we didn't have time to die uh, to this, between the Remai and Choshen Mishpat and the Meiri. The Remai and Choshen Mishpat uh, 34 said that even they come with the two different uh, claim over stealing things, that one has nothing to do with the others, you can combine them and make him disqualified. The Meiri disputed blatantly and he says, since it's a total different case of total different stealing in total different circumstantial evidence, you cannot impose that on disqualification on this case. Anyway, um, so they ask of mayor how you're treated. 
So he said, Rabbi Meir, Rabbi Yossi, Lechaki Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yossi Amar, who's done with the name of the Lord, the name of Rabbi Yossi, is the one who said that if you get a guy that he is rendered a conspiring witness when it's come to a case of monetary law, he is fit to testify in case of capital law because, as we said earlier, we cannot combine um, um, together if a, a thief takes something for himself. So everyone said that he is, but here, because it's different cases, that's created its problem by its own. So therefore you go with the Mishnah, you go with the usual way, that you go by an attributed Mishnah, you go by Rabbi Meir. Mimai, il, imalet, nan, kola, rawila, din, den, fashot, rawila, din, den, monot, we learn in tractor, lida, page 49, that someone who's befitting to deal with capital punishment, and he can be, um, reside, so, mani, il, ma, rabbi, osi, yak, ad, ika, edzom, in, den, mamon, kasher, den, fashot, pasul, den, mamonot, elav, rabbi, Meir, hi. Mimai, dil, ma, psula, yu, chasin, kai. Maybe talk about someone, who is disqualified for, uh, for lineage. For example, someone who came from an uh, unfitting relation, an amzerut. So it's not uh, it's, uh, it's someone who is disqualified because he committed a sin. It's just by nature that the way he is born to the world in, in the prohibited relation, that's the reason that makes that entity, that person is disqualified for, um, for bear witness. So they said, Dilotem Achei, Sefer Dektan Yeshaw Lidin Emanot Venerul Lidin Nefashot, Amai, אנו ראו די תזם בדין נפשות, ראו לדין נממנות, ועד דברי הכל פסולו, אלא פסול יוחסין קאי, הכנה מפסול יוחסין קאי. So you see here that sometimes in ממונות, in monetary issues, someone is, is befitting, when it's come to, to capital law, he is not qualified. אלא אחת, כסתם לנתן עד אתנן. This is, we learn in Tractate Rosh Hashanah, page 22. אלו נפסולים, that's something we learn many times. The list of people that disqualified from bear witness in a court, המשחק בקובייה, someone who's a gambler playing with dice, ומלווה בריבית, people who um, uh, lending money with interest, ומפריחי יונים, those who have a dog competitive, and nowadays you can say horses, um, וסוחרי שביעית, people who are uh, uh, um, uh, selling, buying, um, something that in a sabbatical year that in Eretz Israel is prohibited to sell by, והעבדים, and the slaves. So all this list of people, זה הכלל כל עדות שאינה אישה כשרה לה. אף אין הם כשרים למאני, אי למה רבי יוסי והאיכה עדות בדיני נפשות, שאין האישה כשרה לה, ואין כשרים לה. אלא עליו רבי מאיר. אין סתם מישנה אפלו רבי מאיר. So therefore the הלכה is follow the, his opinion. It's a general question that people ask, for example, שמעיה נפתליון. שמעיה נפתליון was convert when they are serving the Sanhedrin. How come? When you talk about Yuchasin. So some said that they are not really uh, children of converts. Some said that the Tumim is a book called Tumim. So he said that since Klal Israeli, since the, 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 our nation accepted them, that's it. But anyway, it's a question. Come Bar Hamak Nashkeya Krae. So Bar Hama uh, then arose and kissed Rav Papi on his feet. He saved his life. Vekablei Lechargei Dekule Shnei. And he accepted upon himself to pay his tax for his entire year. Um, so the Pilpula Kharifta and Yad David and others said that uh, he basically commit himself to work hard with the government, with the king, to exempt him from taxes. And it's not considering robbery. The, the Rosh asked, is that robbery in, in any form? So there is a book called Shalot V'Tshuvot, the uh, uh, response of Pnei Yoshua, grandfather of the Pnei Yoshua we know. And he dealt with this type of question when it's come to um, uh, trusting someone when uh, that person uh, basically is disqualified in different areas. How far you can go in trusting him in other areas. But as we said, this is a broader subject. We just touched a very based idea. We have a list of disqualification. What we learn, basically the general rule is Rabbi Yudah, that when you have distrust in one area, doesn't matter that doesn't mean that automatically he is distrust in every area and every case is different. Mm -hmm.